My opponent wants sanctuary cities. But where was the sanctuary for Kate Steinle? Where was the sanctuary for the children of Marianne and Sabine and Jamil? Where was the sanctuary for all of the other? Oh, it's so sad to even be talking about it because we could solve this problem so quickly. Donald Trump, during his acceptance speech at the Republican National Convention, putting the spotlight back on an issue that really brought him early success. That, of course, the issue of sanctuary cities. We all remember the senseless murder of Kate Steinle in San Francisco, the fact that that became a symbol of the consequences of having sanctuary cities. But new reports now say the Obama administration is rewarding sanctuary cities that protect violent illegal immigrants. The report by Tom Fidden of Judicial Watch reveals cities are receiving millions of dollars in federal grants for this action. Let's go in depth now with two of my congressional colleagues. Uh, again, joining us from Newsmax Washington, uh, Pete Hoekstra, and of course, via Skype, from the great state of Colorado, Tom Tancredo. Gentlemen, we appreciate your time. And Tom, this is something that in our days in Congress, we were trying to warn about, and you took action directly trying to affect the power of the purse. Right. Well, there is actually a federal law on the books, and it's been there for quite some time, that says essentially you can't have a sanctuary city, that you have to cooperate with, well, at the time it was the INS. Um, but the problem was, and still is, there are no teeth in that law. If you violate it, nothing bad can happen. It just says you violated the law. Well, of course, so cities with great impudence go ahead and, um, and do it all the time. We tried seven times in eight years. I, I tried to add an amendment to the appropriations bill that would have restricted the federal funds, because that's the only thing that we've got, really, that, to actually put a hammer on it. Uh, restricted federal funds to cities who violate that law. It uh, started out, I think I had, the first time I offered it, I think we had about 70 votes, and the last time it was about 180. Not quite enough, but it had gained ground. And, and yet it shows how pervasive, sadly for both parties, this is. And uh, what was going on back when we all three were in Congress. Uh, as we take a quick look, there is a map that shows the continental United States is just replete with sanctuary cities and counties. And uh, Pete Hoekstra, we look at this, and I, I think we need to make an important distinction, because if people look at your biography, literally you were an immigrant. You came from, uh, from the Netherlands, what, you were two or three, but your, fam so. your family uh, immigrated legally to the United States. Pete, when you, when you see what is going on with illegal immigration and especially with these sanctuary cities and the crime, what is your take on it? Well, it, it's, it's absolutely awful. I applaud what you know, Tom tried to do while he was in Congress. You know, this is why the American people are so frustrated today. They continue to see you know, a rig system, a double system that is out there. Think about it. You can come in, you can break the law, you can come into the country illegal and you illegally and you can find sanctuary, uh, a safe haven where, you know, the government won't come after you and actually the government of that locality, they will protect you. If any one of the three of us, if any one of the majority of your listeners, if we break the law, you know, we will be brought, we will be arrested, we will be brought in front of a, of a court, and uh, we will have a trial. But we will get hammered. People who come in and take a privilege, you know, it's a privilege to be able to come and immigrate to the United States. But they come here illegally, they may commit crimes, and they have a safe haven. We should be a nation of laws. We need to enforce the borders. We need to enforce the law once people get here and those types of things. When we, do, when we don't do that, we totally undercut the thing that makes America special is that we are a nation of laws where all people are treated equally.
Well, we are also a program of phone calls where we appreciate those viewing for calling in and offering their comments at 1-877-NEWSMAX. That's 1-877-639-7629. Let's go down to the Lone Star State, to Texas. Don is checking in, I believe, uh, from Leakey, Texas. Don, it's good to have you here on Newsmax Prime. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, First time uh, viewer and caller myself. Great. Good Uh, to have you. Now, I just wanted to say that the um, Sadiq Mir Mateen, the father of the Orlando shooter, was put there on purpose as a symbol of the unholy alliance between the Luciferian, I, I term them to be the Luciferian globalists and their candidate, and radical Islam. And it's an unholy alliance, but they do have one goal in common, to take down this country, to take down Christianity, and to take down the Second Amendment. Of course, to do all of those, they have to take the Second Amendment first. And uh, there was no accident that he was placed there. And again, let's put it in perspective. You were referring to the hearing as we're seeing video from uh, West Palm Beach NBC affiliate WPTV when we see Sadiq Mateen, the father of the Orlando terrorist, seated behind Hillary Clinton. Uh, you, you know, you know, guys, uh, Tom, you ran for president. You've been in those big stage managed events. The fact that Mateen was back there, they had to know he was right there. I guarantee you they knew. Nobody gets in that position by simply wandering in to the event and, and then just going up on stage like it's ridiculous. It's idiotic to even consider that. No, all of this is stage managed. All of the people there are, were there. People knew who they were and placed them there for a reason. I certainly agree with the caller that there is an unholy alliance and it is meant to take down this country. It is actually meant to destroy Western civilization. It is doing a great job of it. Certainly in Europe, they are 90% of the way gone. And we are definitely heading down that same path. It is their desire to see a Western civilization demolished. And we are aiding them. The President of the United States is aiding them. He wants it demolished also. He has talked about it. He, is, he should have been impeached so many times for the crimes he's committed, especially, of course, his sh- shredding of the Constitution of the United States over and over again. Pete, let me get your thoughts, because obviously you used to chair the House Intelligence Committee. Uh, Sadiq Mateen, we understand, uh, advocated for the Taliban, even though he came to this country from war-torn Afghanistan, if memory serves, during the then-Soviet occupation. Uh, what kind of character is this Mateen guy who was there featured so prominently a few nights ago at Mrs. Clinton's rally? Well, this is a, an individual that clearly has sympathies for the radical jihadist movement, uh, supporting the Taliban and those types of things. But what Tom said is exactly right. This president and this secretary of state, they made a fundamental decision when they, took, when they came into office that they were going to change our relationship with the Muslim world because they thought that America was at fault. And if we changed our behavior, radical jihadists would change their behavior. They embraced the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt and got rid of Mubarak. They embraced the Muslim Brotherhood in Libya and overthrew Gaddafi. Luckily, in Egypt, uh, you know, the citizens rose up and they put Sisi in power uh, and got rid of the the Muslim Brotherhood. But Libya has been a festering sore, uh, you know, an exporter of weapons, ideology, uh, and fighters to Africa, to the Middle East, to Syria, and Europe. And that's the story that's never been told yet. How this administration got in bed with the Muslim Brotherhood, who, as Tom accurately describes, wants to destroy the United States, and they want to destroy the American way of life and the values that we have. And once that story gets out in more detail, uh, I think that you're going to see uh, the American people stunned uh, by what this administration has done over the last seven and a half years. A minute 30 remains in this segment. Let's go back to the phones and let's go up to our 49th state, to Alaska, specifically to Anchorage, where Tommy is waiting on the line. Tommy, welcome to Newsmax Prime. Yeah, this is my first time here, man, and I'm glad to be on the station. We're glad to have you, Tommy. Okay, thank you. Hey, listen, I want the American people to look at what they're talking about. Number one, Barack Obama is not the leader of this country by himself. He got... 
the House and the Senate. The House and the Senate is all Republican. Well, it's majority Republican, not all Republican, but the point is well taken that they should have moved to stop with the power of the purse some of these actions that we're criticizing right now. That point is well taken. Yeah, but but, but what what I'm saying is this right here. Every time Obama put in a bill to try to get something did for this country, who blocked it? The Republicans. Every time when Barack Obama was, was voted in, Republican held a flag. I watched it on the White well, House. And I appreciate that. And of course, you understand in a two party system, it's not just because uh, the president's the president, he's a Democrat. There are disagreements within our government. And though we may disagree on issues, Tommy, we're glad you called in tonight. We hope you'll call us again. Tom Tancredo from Colorado, Pete Hoekstra from Newsmax, Washington. Gentlemen, you have our thanks. Coming back with Dick Morris on the presidential campaign. <laughs>